So occasionally you gotta ask me, are you investing? And my response to that is, aye aye, Captain. And with that, what I wanna do today is share with you my portfolio. I wanna share with you what I've bought into in the past little while, what my cost basis is, what my growth or losses are throughout the year, as well as whether or not I feel like I wanna buy more, sell, or hold some of these positions that I have. And the reason why I'm sharing this video with you is because it's been a while since I've done a portfolio video. It's been since like October of last year, which is a long time ago. And with this channel, I wanna be as transparent as possible so that you guys can see that I am practicing what I am preaching. So with that, are you ready kids? Aye aye, Captain. I can't hear you. Aye aye, Captain. Come on, that's a SpongeBob joke. You guys should know this. All right, so the first position I wanna go over with you guys right now, because we're all pirates, I mean investors, is the cash position. And the reason why I feel the cash position is a very important one to go over right now is due to the market we are currently in, which is a gambler's market or seller's market. I'm just kidding, we're in a seller's market, but seriously, take a look at some of the articles I've been reading into lately. I mean, just look at these titles. Here's how investors think FOMO could power fresh gains in the stock market. Or, it's like the Wild West with Get Rich Quick crowd versus Wall Street pros. And even, a portfolio of stocks being bought by mom and pop investors is trouncing Wall Street pros. And lastly, rampant speculation in the stock market. You ain't seen nothing yet. Think the Federal Reserve. I mean, seriously, come on. So my portfolio consists of about 27.5% in cash. That's roughly around $4,300 that I can deploy into the market at any given time. Now, do I feel like the market's gonna sustain itself much longer? I don't think so. I feel like there's too many people out there just throwing their money at it, thinking that they're gonna make a lot of money because they're gambling. And I don't think that's gonna happen much longer because I think a lot of hedge funds are gonna be like, you know what? The market can't sustain itself like this. We're just gonna take all of our money out. And at that point, all the people who don't understand the market who are just gambling are gonna suffer the consequences. And that's when I will deploy my little soldiers out and make lots and lots of money by buying up all the shares. Makes sense? I hope it does. Now you're probably saying, well, Ryan, if the market's gonna drop, why don't you sell more shares? That way you have a larger portion in cash. Well, the thing is, is I don't know when that's gonna happen, so I wanna keep a lot of my money into companies that I already know are good and can always bounce back in case the market drops again. So let's go ahead and go into my second position, which is Uber. Now you're probably thinking, Uber, really? Aren't they like really affected by the whole illness going around? And the answer is yes. It's actually Actually one of the reasons why I've been selling out of my position in Uber. Uber used to consist of about 18 to 20% of my portfolio and now is only about 3% of my portfolio. So what I did was I sold out 80% of my shares. I had 75 shares in total. Now I only have 15. Those 60 shares I sold were pretty much my initial investment in the company and the remaining 15 shares is the gravy money or house money, whichever way you want to look at it. Now the 60 shares I sold, I sold for a 300 some odd dollar profit and I sold it off for a 18% gain. With that said, the reason why I didn't sell out of the other 15 shares is because I still have confidence in their CEO, Dara. I feel like he is a very established CEO with a good track record behind him. So I feel like he can pull Uber out of what it's in right now with its non-profitability, especially in the sector that it was profitable in. On top of that, I was excited about the fact that they were going to buy out Grubhub but that plan recently fell through, which makes me more on the fence of whether or not I should sell or hold these remaining shares in the position. Now, right now my cost base is at around $24.50 a share, and I am up about 40% in those shares. So it really makes me wanna think, hmm, What's gonna happen in the next couple of weeks? Should I sell or should I hold it? Right now it's gonna be a hold. I wanna see what happens during the next couple of weeks. If nothing happens, then I'm just gonna sell out of my remaining position and just take the profit from where it's at. Anyways, let's go ahead and go on to the second stock. And that would be CCL Carnival Cruise Line. And I'm sure I could guess what you're thinking. Ryan, isn't that another non-profitable company right now? Like there's no revenue whatsoever? Like. KO'd, and yes, I agree with you on that. Let me walk you through a few numbers and explain why I'm still invested in this company. So first things first, it's about 12.1% of my portfolio. I own 100 shares at a cost basis of $19.57, roughly around a $2,000 investment. For me personally, 
I bought into this company at $31 a share, roughly. I did not expect the company to completely shut down, so that was a little disappointing. But they have enough cash and cash equivalents on their balance sheet that they can get to January of next year without having to bring in a profit. Now, with that said, if they make it to that point, they either have to build capital or they have to file bankruptcy. Now, that could be a problem. It can make it to where I lose my entire investment, which doesn't sound good. But at the same time, if they become profitable and they recover within the next two to three years and they return back to the stock price that they were before the illness broke out, which was $50, $60 a share, that's almost a 200% profit margin for me, which is better than what most people would expect over the next two to three years. On top of that, if their dividend returns and it's even half as good as what it used to be, I would be looking at a five to 10% dividend each and every year for the shares that I own, which is awesome. So that to me is a reward that outweighs the risks for me being invested in this. And I hope that it doesn't go bankrupt. And if it is successful, I could see this being a very good success in the long run. And that is why I'm still invested in CCL. And that is why I'm going to keep it at a hold, not a sell, but definitely not a buy either. Anyways, let's move on to the third company. So the third company I got in my portfolio is Facebook, the big FB. I love me some Facebook. And let me explain why as soon as I tell you what I got. So Facebook consists of about 8.7% of my portfolio. I have a cost basis of $178 a share. I have six shares in total. And I wish I could have bought more during the dip. And that's when I bought the majority of my shares. But you get what you can when you can and you just deal with it. I'm up about 26% as of right now, time of recording. Now, why do I like Facebook so much? First of all, their platforms are the biggest. You got the Instagram, you got Facebook, you got WhatsApp, and they're actually coming out with a uh, retail side of everything, which is their e-commerce portion for Facebook, which they're partnering up with Shopify to do that, which can diversify their source of income. Right now, about 98 plus percent of their income is through ad revenue and diversifying that could help and strengthen their numbers a lot. Now, right now I could see them just below a $1 trillion market cap in the next two to three years, possibly more, just depends on where they go with everything. And therefore at my cost basis right now, that's about a 65% increase, which is a lot during the next two to three years, which is awesome. Now, if I buy more at this particular price, I'm looking at about a 31% increase and I'm, I'm just not feeling that for the next two or three years. So right now I feel like if it goes down to about 200 to $190 a share, I feel like I could buy more, but right now it is just a hold for me. So let's go ahead and go into the fourth and final company. But before we get into the fourth and final position, I want to tell you that I have sold out of a few positions since my last portfolio video. And so if you're wondering about those, I will make a video about that on a later date in the future. So stay tuned to that. So my fourth and final position is Tesla. It is also my largest position at 49.4% of my portfolio. I have eight shares with a cost basis of $254 per share. I am up roughly around 258% in this position. Now this leads me to the next thing. Do I want to buy, hold, or sell some more of these shares? Now this is a tough question because I want to own more, but it's already such a large portion of my portfolio. I can't own more without it destroying the, the balance in my portfolio even more. Next, I don't want to sell any shares because I predict this company to be just a little shy of a half a trillion dollar company in the next five to 10 years. Now, with that said, I'm at around $900 to $1,000 price range right now with Tesla. That means I'm about 50% less valued because I expect this to be a $2,200 stock in the future. So I don't want to sell any shares, so therefore I am just stuck holding them. Now I plan on making a video about Tesla, but if you want to see me make a video as soon as possible about why I predicted to be a half a trillion dollar company in the next five to 10 years, please leave a comment down below. Just let me know so I can get on as soon as possible. And so right now my portfolio is worth around 13, 14 K with the cash. It's around 17, 18 K. But with that guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider smashing that like button for the YouTube algorithm helps people like yourself find my videos here on YouTube. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, please consider hitting the subscribe button over to my right. It's an ugly mug. Looks just like this one. And I'll see you guys in the next video.